Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. You can tell from the title, I'm starting another e-bike. Just... As you can also probably tell, this big box in front of me is something to do with the e-bike. <coughs> I've been waiting for it for quite a while uh, and I'm really excited to get started. I don't care how much of an idiot I make myself look like because I'm going to be having lots of fun. So without further ado, let's have a look inside this box and let's get started building. So yes, this is the e-bike frame. Now there's a bit of a story on this one, because uh, I was going to order one from China, I started the order process, but as you can probably imagine the situation there at the moment, uh, there were quite a lot of delays and eventually I was like, you know what, I'm just going to try and find one locally. So I managed to find one in the UK, went to pick it up, and here it is. So about a month later, I finally have a frame. Opening up the box, um, we have the side panels. Now this is a bit of a weird one, and you'll see one in a sec. Again, as you'll see, a standard Enduro e-bike frame. So anyone who's kind of uh, built one before, uh, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. So, here we go. Here it is. Now, what I'm saying is weird is that the side panels and box are black, but the frame is white. Uh, I wanted it to all be black, but basically the seller only had it in black and white, because this was the last one he was selling and he kind of wanted to get rid of it, I think. Um, so he had a great price on it, uh, and yeah, I accepted the fact that it looks a bit like a cow. Uh, but yeah, so this is, as you can see, um, the seat post. So essentially this attaches to the frame, uh, and then you have your seat post in there, and then you can tighten it up somehow, I don't quite know how, but we'll figure that out. Um, and all of this stuff is made out of um, sheet steel, and so you can see it's about three millimeters thick and it does weigh quite a lot uh, as you would expect now this here is oh gosh it's heavy uh, this is the arm so this is where the wheel actually goes in here and then we have these two bolts which clamp down um, that's if you want to add a derailleur um, I've still got to think whether I want to have one or not because on my last e-bike it um, it kind of just got in the way and stuff and you don't really need gears on an e-bike so I might just have like a fixed sprocket and yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, then this here is to attach your disc brakes on for cable management underneath the, um, the frame. Uh, this bit here is for, um, what do you call it, a kickstand. Um, and then this is where I think your pedals attach. Uh, that's where the rear shock goes and that's where it attaches to the main body. Now this is of course the main body. Uh, I'll talk about this whilst it's in here. So this is um, the headset here. This is where the um, front forks will attach. Um, this is where the rear shock will mount. Um, unfortunately on this exact version, um, that's not adjustable that position. That could be an issue, but you know, this whole thing can be full of issues. This whole project, I know there can be things I'm gonna have to work around and it's not gonna be easy, so. And then this is where the rear arm attaches here. This is a battery box. Um, as you, as you can see, it doesn't take up the whole space. Uh, you can remove this if your battery exceeds how big that is. That's not a problem. Uh, this is a nice space underneath. Um, this is designed to hold a controller, uh, like the sad baton ones, I think. Um, it's got some ventilation. Um, it's got some, you can't see it, but it's got some, well, some holes here. Uh, that's for the charging port, which we'll get onto in a sec. Um, what else? Then on the top, that's where the seat mounts to, the other way around, but um, yeah, and then that's the other side, and that's where the side panels go on. And then last but not least, we um, have a little accessory bag. So inside here, we have a on-off switch, which is nice, so this goes on the side. Um, uh, this is the charging port. I didn't know they'd include this, but they do. Um, it's just a basic kind of two-pin Thing. I'll probably be upgrading this because um, I want to build my own charger um, but I also wanted to have like a sense input that knows when it's plugged in. We'll get to that. Now these are very important. These are bearings for the um, headset and where the force attached. Now these are going to be quite tricky to install but obviously I need to do it. Um, I don't have the correct tool um, but I'm going to look up how to do it so we'll get on to that. Okay, so I've just been uh, watching a tutorial uh, by this uh, YouTuber called uh, Bacon Butters. Uh, I'll put the link in below. Um, this is really helpful in telling me how to kind of put this thing together. 
Um, another quick shout out is to um, Andy Kirby. Now I'm sure anyone in the DIY e-bike kind of industry, so to speak, will have heard of him. Um, he just, he's got these amazing projects going on with e-bikes. Um, he's the one who inspired me to buy this frame. Uh, so Andy, if you're watching, yeah, you've, been, uh, you've played a bit of a part in this project. Um, but without further ado, um, I'm gonna start putting this together. Now, one of the things he mentioned was that when it's painted, um, these holes can sometimes get filled up. Um, I've just got the um, bolts for the um, rear shock, and you can just put it in, and it looks like I got lucky and that mine are fine. Um, but if you're building one, um, yeah, as he said, just check that your bolt does fit through. Um, I know the seller warned me about these bolts here for the um, wheel can get gummed up. Right, now I'm just going to try and get this black box out. In order to do that, I have to take this cover. Right. Yeah, so this is the space for the controller, got some ventilation and stuff. So this is just a um, box, as you can see, where you could put batteries in the stuff, good, a cloak, good way to keep them safe rather than just having them around but when I get onto the batteries I'll just have to decide whether that's going to be kind of restricting me with my uh, size or not. Well, the next big thing is to put these two bits together, uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Oh my gosh that's huge. Okay that's interesting. So I'm guessing this must be an earlier version because in here there's actually no ball bearing, it's just these um, parts which go against this um, oiled section which is fine to be honest for the amount of movement that's in here um, but I'll just put a lot of grease and oil in there and hopefully that'll stay running smoothly. I'm not sure whether it's going to work is because the shock I had on my bike is very small. On proper mountain bikes, I'll put a picture up, they are much bigger. So obviously I know it's going to fit, but whether it's going to look right and feel right is another question. Now obviously... Oh my gosh. That's not going to work, is it? Now, the next part, which is going to be quite tricky, is getting these bearings into the headset. Because, yeah, my frame doesn't come with that. Some have these kind of pre-done in. Uh, now, I don't have a special tool to that. Uh, sorry, tool to do this. You can get them. And also, annoyingly, my biggest G-clamp doesn't quite fit. So, um, the only thing I can do is place a piece of wood on the top and gently use a rubber mallet to get it in. Okay. Okay, uh, this may or may not work, but it's a very high-tech solution, as you can see. Uh, I've got a rod going through the middle um, with essentially wing nuts and then a bunch of stuff to make it the right thickness. So hopefully, or the aim at least, is that uh, to tighten these down and uh, then gradually get these to work. So, quick update on this. I'm not having any luck with getting these in. As you can see, I've already scratched it up a little bit and taken some pay off the frame. So I've decided to, um, to call in the experts. I'm gonna take this section down to Halfords 
and uh, yeah, get them to do it because I'm sure they'll do a much better job than me. So to cut a long story short, took this middle section to Halfords with the um, bearings and uh, as you can see, they did a really nice job of putting in the, uh, the top and, and the bottom bearings. Uh, they just had all the right tools for the job and made it look like a piece of cake. And just to give you an idea, this, uh, this rear bracket alone is weighing in about six kilograms and that's uh, pretty much hard steel. So yeah, pretty strong stuff. Okay, so now we have both bearings installed. Uh, the fork fits on like that. Now obviously the top looks a bit weird. This is not the um, an ideal fork. Ideally you'd have like a double crown um, proper like off-roading fork. Um, I don't have one at the moment. That is definitely like a, an upgrade for the future. But for now, this is going to be absolutely fine. Okay, so here are our handlebars. Now anyone who knows a lot about bikes will know that these aren't the best handlebars style where they kind of go inside and then have this clamp here. Uh, but again, it's all I've got. It's going to work with this fork, so fingers crossed it should be okay. So here they are. Now what I need to do is make sure that these two are in line. So now, there we go.